Within the sphere of hobbyist audio, nothing commands more interest or attention than an elaborate design. In fact, anytime I showcase something north of 6th order, the feedback is generally, can you design one for such and such subwoofer, or what are the benefits of this type of an enclosure? And while I can design any order enclosure for just about any open back driver, the benefits and the drawbacks of high order enclosures can take a little more time to explain. So... Okay, so right up front, if you don't already know how to count enclosure orders and you're not doing anything for the next 8 minutes, do us both a favor, pause this video and watch the one where I explain it. There is a link in the description or you can simply search for counting enclosure orders. Conveniently, it's the only video on YouTube on the subject, at least at the time of this recording. I'll wait. Okay, so now that you're totally awesome at identifying acoustic orders, let's jump straight to 8th with a few examples of how you can achieve it. Here's an 8th order bass reflex. As you can see, the active component is just a rudimentary 4th order bass reflex with a couple of 2nd order passive chambers cascaded in series. Here's an 8th order bandpass variation of the same series tuned arrangement. There is our 4th order active component, followed by a couple of 2nd order passive filters. This next one is an 8th order parallel tuned bandpass, fittingly comprising a 6th order parallel tuned active component that's attached to a 2nd order passive filter. And here's an example of an 8th order series parallel tuned hybrid bandpass, which is basically a 6th order bass reflex firing through a 2nd order passive chamber. So what do all these mazes of vents and chambers amount to? Well, as with most things, there's the good and the bad, so let's first talk about the good. Number 1. Sensitivity, by which I mean how efficiently the system can convert input wattage to output decibels. Properly designed, an 8th order enclosure can be exceptionally loud. About a lifetime or so ago, I did design an 8th order project for my old forum members to experience this firsthand. It was based on one of those little 5 and a quarter Dayton classic woofers that you could pick up from Parts Express for 20 bucks. You probably still can. At any rate, few people did build it, reporting the output to be roughly equivalent to a decent 10 inch sub. So that's the first positive. Number two is control, and a good analogy to use here would be a parametric equalizer. The behavior of your typical fourth order enclosure, whether bass reflex or bandpass, can be compared to a single equalizer control point where you get to adjust your frequency and Q. A sixth order enclosure adds a second control point, an eighth order enclosure adds a third control point, and so on in that fashion. Not only can having all those control points be useful for shaping the response in, say, a troublesome listening environment, but you're also exerting the same control over the excursion and impedance, which in turn helps your power handling. Some people may tell you that high order enclosures are only good for SPL one note wonders, and they can be if you lump all your control points together creating a massive spike, but you can also spread them apart and cover as much bandwidth as you'd like. One cautionary note though, high order enclosures, specifically of the bandpass variety, are notoriously good at masking distortion, so by the time your speaker begins to clip in a way that would ordinarily prompt you to back off the volume a little bit, well, you might not be able to hear that. <laughs> It'll just get louder, and louder, and louder, and then poof. I don't know what happened, right? This brings us to the negatives, and apart from the concealed distortion and the obvious complexity of design and assembly, there's really just a couple. Number one is group delay, which didn't sound quite ominous enough. Group delay. There it is. Now, what is group delay, you may ask? And it's basically the time gap between the electrical signal that goes into the enclosure and the sound coming out. Generally speaking, the higher your acoustic order is, the more group delay you'll get since the pressure has to cycle through all those vents and chambers before eventually emerging in phase at the listening position. The second drawback is size. Eighth order enclosures are not compact. In fact, the one scenario in which I could possibly see them being practical is if you have a ton of space but you don't feel like investing a lot of money to cram that space full of speakers and amplifiers. Say you have a single 10 inch sub and 5 cubic feet of space that you're just itching to do something cool with. I mean, yeah, you could just build a big ass ported box, but then you have all this air mass hinging on a single control point. This is why small subs and big ported enclosures tend to have a very spiky response, but it doesn't have to be that way. In any case, I hope you found this information useful. Feel free to rate the video accordingly. If you have any questions or ideas for what I should cover next, I'll be looking over the comments. In the meantime, cheers!